Good morning. What a beautiful day. It's a nice breezy day and I don't think we're as hot as we normally are. So I welcome you all as we begin to celebrate the Eucharist. I just have a few announcements. First of all, I want to thank Father Dominic for coming out and spending his Sunday morning with us. Uh, phase two is, uh, we're in phase two still, and we can be in or out of the car. So you can be in front of your car in a chair if you'd wish, and make sure that you're six feet apart. And we still ask that no one hug each other. For communion today, we will be having the offering of the wafers, of the bread, but there will be no wine. Susan Amabel will be selling raffle tickets on the way out for our fun Demic uh, raffle. And uh, the drawing is September 20th. There's going to be prizes, different prizes, homemade stuff, gift cards, and uh, baked goodies. So buy your raffle tickets. And you do not need to be present to win. September 6th, next week, we will have a student's and teacher's blessing. So please email or text any names that you want to have it out announced to either Sue O'Hare or Father Harvey. September 20th, we'll have our creation walk after the 9 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. service. At Robinson State Park. That's a problem. September 26th, we will have our wine tasting at Mary Moore's house from 12 o'clock until 3:45. And any uh, money that is raised from the wine tasting will be put towards St. David's. On October 4th, we will have St. Francis Day and the blessing of our gardens. Thank you for being with us today. The order for Holy Eucharist is right to 
which is found in your prayer books on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed and be his kingdom, kingdom of now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let us, let us join together in saying glory to God, God in the, the highest, highest and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, heavenly, heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we, we give you thanks, thanks. We, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son, Son of the Father, Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Exodus 3, verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet. For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring, bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. <clears throat> when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, <clears throat> excuse me, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? The God of your... <clears throat> God says to Moses, 
I am who I am. He said further, thus you should say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say Psalm 105 together. <clears throat> we'll be doing verses 1 through 6, 23 through 26, and 45C from the Book of Common Prayer. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord and call upon, upon his name. name. Make Lord, known his deeds among the, the peoples. peoples. Sing, sing to him, sing praises, praises to him, and, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt. And Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> The second reading is from Romans 12, and we'll be saying verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. If, <clears throat> beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. <clears throat> In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We just sang that wonderful little song. We are one in spirit. We are one in the Lord. And all will know us as Christians by our love. They're pretty simple words. And I was thinking about them because they spoke with my thoughts that came when I began reading um, in preparation for today. And we hear Paul remind us of his letter to the Romans, let love be genuine. Let love be genuine. Many, many, many years ago, Charles Dickens in The Tale of Two Cities opened that novel with the following statement. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And we seem to be living into that reality today. Particularly when we take notice what with the killing in Kenosha, Wisconsin of Jacob Blake three months previously with the killing of George Floyd. And at the same time, in Kenosha, when all the rioting began, we see that there is a 17-year-old walking the streets with an AK-47. Coupled with that, we live in uncertain times of, of how do we confront this pandemic that knows no bounds knows no bounds. It affects those who are privileged, the unprivileged. It affects those of all races and creeds. As a world, we live in a time of uncertainty. And then add to that the fact that we have just witnessed the devastation caused by Hurricane Laura in New Orleans and Texas. But it's not just about the national or world scene. All this enmity and confusion even reaches down to our everyday experience. Oftentimes, 
I happen to shop at Aldi. And I love the person at the cash register. Always has a smile. And I've tried to convince her that after she checks out my goods, I said, okay, I'll tell you what, is this free now? She said, no, it can't be free. I said, oh, I have to try, you know. And I said, how are you doing? She says, pretty good. I said, do many people get upset with you? Now, here's a checkout person. You would think, and I do in my own mind, why would somebody want to get upset with the checkout person? And the answer I received was, yes, happens all the time. I said, how do you manage? How do you, oh, I forgot to take my mask off. How do you manage to keep that smile on your face? And she said, it's just who I am. Our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, in, the power, in his book, The Power of Love, mentioned this. He said, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is selfishness. And hatred is a derivative of selfishness. That's a pretty powerful statement. It made me think. This is what we're facing today. And this is what Jesus is talking about, both in the gospel and what is Paul is referring to in his letter. And Jesus reminds us that we must be willing to put our own life aside. Now, what does that truly mean? It means that we are willing not to be so self-absorbed that we think that we're the most important in the world today. The one who is important is the great I am, the one we call Lord and Savior. And in these times when we see all these conflicted messages that have as their foundation the divisiveness of the times we live in, we can begin to understand that divisiveness is caused when we fail to live out our commission as Christians to love one another. To love one another. What does that mean for us? Well, let us think for a moment. Today, we're about to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Episcopal Church, our tradition is we stretch out our arms in love and in anticipation that we will be fed by the body of our Lord. And then, and I think this is what is essential about who we are, we drink from the common cup. And maybe perhaps due to this time that we live in, when we do not, drink from the common cup, perhaps we forget what it truly means to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, no matter who we are, what our social standing is, whether or not we're black, white, Democrat, Republican, independent, conservative, liberal, it doesn't matter. And I think we need to be reminded that we are called to be genuine in our love. How does that look? We have the power to overcome the divisiveness, the enmity. We have the power to offer a different type of discourse if we only remember that we live as Christians who understand that we are hopeful. We're hopeful. 
we're hopeful because the great I am reminds us that no matter where we are, God is also. We're not walking alone. We're called to be patient. Our forebears wander around for 40 years to reach their home. And yes, they got a little anxious, to say the least. But they did get a little anxious. But God kept affirming for them that they were his people. And most of all, we're called to be a people of prayer. It's not a prayer that's based upon, oh God, let me have my way. It would be nice if that was a type of prayer. But no, the prayer that we should offer is one that says, God, I am lost. I feel uncertain. But I know I know that we live in your promise of new life that always comes day by day. And what we need to do is be able to see the world, not in the chaos that is prevalent, but in the small acts and miracles that take place. Just the other day, there was a person who had a lawnmower tip over in a lake. And then suddenly, four or five people are rushing and they keep his head above the water while they manage to turn this lawnmower over. Tell me God does not act. We see a small child who walks up to a person and hugs them and says, I love you. Not because this person is known, but because this child was filled with love. We're called to do no less. And when we begin living out our life as a community that shares and is shaped by the sharing of a common cup, people will truly know we are one in spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we begin the small changes that are necessary because our love indeed is genuine. Amen. 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 Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. He became incarnate. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers of the people can be found on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will be saying Form 2. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our presiding Bishop Michael, for our Bishop Douglas, for our Minister Dominic and Harvey, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Pat, Mary, Sarah, Eddie, Michael, Hadley, Ann, John, Betty, Kathy, and the Whitaker family. I ask your thanksgiving for the birthday of Chrissy Turcott White. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercy, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls. Isn't that a wonderful statement? You are gracious, O oh lover of souls. And I might add that we too might become lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Turning back in the prayer book to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace.
Great Thanksgiving continues with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right that a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin to become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recall at his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may be faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the glory 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, come. thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. And the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We will now say the prayer of spiritual communion. Please repeat after me. In union, O oh Lord, in union, O oh Lord, with your faith, faithful people, with your faithful people, at every altar of your church, at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you, I desire to offer to you, praise and thanksgiving, praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today, since I cannot receive you today, in the sacrament of your body and blood, in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you, I beseech you, to come spiritually into my heart. To come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Christ. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Christ. And let me never be separated from you. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you. May I live in you. And you in me and you in me in this life and in the life to come in this life and in the life to come amen amen and let us pray eternal god heavenly, heavenly father, father. You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinfulness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and all those you encounter now and evermore. Amen. 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 Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.